Elon Musk is the same. I mean, I, I spoke to Walter and he he told me that Elon has this just in obsessive ability to just assume that everything he's being told is basically not true. I.e. if someone says something takes eight eight months or something, he, he seems to just reject that idea on site and he immediately asks about the core components of the challenge. So he'll immediately go right down to the roots of the problem. Yep. And from there, he'll figure out that in fact, it can get done in eight days. And I, and I just don't think people understand the advantage of saving that amount of time on, on, big, on any challenge you have in your life, on figuring out a way to make it happen faster. Because one of the great currencies of all of our lives is just the time that we have. Yeah. And some people are like, some people will take three to four years to start a business that with your information and that your understanding and your bias would probably take you 90 days. Yeah. Now that's a three, like a three year, nine month saving on life. Just because you have this sort of urgent bias, you have this bias towards believing that all these deadlines are actually just, um, I don't know, a bullshit. Yeah. I mean, one of my favorite mentors told me a line that changed my life, which was, um, it was Bill Perkins. I asked him why he's so successful in so many aspects of his life, damn near a billionaire. And uh, and he said, the only reason that I'm successful is I'm faster than everybody else. By the time they have thought about an idea, taken it to a meeting and started to move, I have already made three mistakes and found a faster way. And so his bias on speed is fascinating. If you ever hang out with the guy, it's wild. You know, I'll be like, can we schedule a meeting? He's like, I'm calling you right now. Um, and so he just moves quicker. So in our companies, we implemented something called the 24 hour rule, which was this idea that if we want to win, we have to have a bias towards action. We have to decrease our time between thinking about a thing and doing the thing. And so most people say, well, I'll get back to you on that next week, right? Get back to you on that next week. Hate that line. That is where dreams and money goes to die. Instead, I say, can you get it to me tomorrow? If all we do different than our competitors is they take a week to do things and we get it done in a day, I don't have to be richer, smarter, or better. I'm just faster. Mm. And it drives my team crazy many times, but I'm not smarter. I'm really not. I'm just very fast at a few things and I ignore a shit ton of stuff that I don't think is going to move us forward. Mm. You're, you're the same. I've seen it with your team. You know, uh, We've gone back and forth with your team and then you'll be like, let's just do this one thing right now instead. I'm like, oh yeah, okay, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And so I think speed is the consistency. It's Chris and I were just talking about this. I got annoyed the other day because I was, um, you know, what happens is people overthink things. And in this day and age, it happens more and more. They they think about the thing and they confuse thinking with work. And more often than not, thinking is not working. And this is where people will yell at me on the internet and go, well, if I just don't think about anything and I move really fast, I could move fast in the wrong direction. Yeah, you could, but just iterate. Move fast and iterate. Mm -hmm. And that's what most people don't do. And so I'll tell my team all the time, you're thinking about this way too much. Make a decision in 30 seconds. What's the decision? I'll tell you if I like it, yes or no. I like the decision, move forward. And so ask yourself that in life. It's like Mel Robbins, one, two, three, four, five, get out of bed. Yeah. Mine is 30 seconds to decision. Mm. I was, it reminds me of a, I think it was an SAS, former SAS uh, soldier that I was speaking to. And he said his friend was going through a lot of problems in his life, going through a divorce, et cetera, et cetera. And he asked, he called him and asked him for advice. He said, you're an SAS, you know, soldier, what should I do? And he said, when you're in the middle of the woods and you're feeling lost, start walking. Yeah. And it's a nice metaphor for life, which is you, you could, you, you'll die of starvation, just stood there overthinking about your problems lost in the middle of the woods. But if you start walking, you'll gain some information, you'll gain, you'll gain your bearings. And I think especially in my earlier career, I was certainly a victim of like procrastinating myself into a hole with, with, a, with a big business problem. But even this morning, I had something this morning, my team in the UK was speaking to me about uh, quite, a, quite a critical business decision that I had to make. And it's now in my old age that I realized, uh, I realized, I almost said like a flash, I was like, an older version of me will, would, would spend three months trying to get this decision right. But a more mature version of me knows that there is no perfect outcome. There's yeah. pain on all sides of this decision. <laughs> so, so, true. so I have to write, I wrote this long ass like essay memo this morning and sent it into a person in my, one of my offices in, the, in, in Europe. And it's so crazy that they responded, this person responded within, because I was so like, I was so concerned about what they might say and how it might end. 
And they responded within four and a half minutes. And they're like, yeah, cool, got it. I actually agree. And no need to call me because I, I completely understand. And I thought, fucking hell, that could have taken three months of us all in a boardroom deliberating how to break this news. 100%. It's interesting. It's funny because the people that are most experienced in business seem to be the most intense. And I think this kind of gives the clue as to why. Yeah. You know, one thing I've also realized, if you want to if you want to get higher level positions, one of the other things you can do to get there faster, I think, is your speed of communication. It's not even your speed of action. So if you're in an interview, don't bumble fuck your way through the interview. Think about exactly what you want to say with as few words as possible and be as direct as possible in it. And I've realized there's a huge correlation in our executives we hire between those who are good, they speak fast, they are clear, and they don't waste other people's times. Uh, you know, there are a couple of executives I still have at some of my companies, and there are two that I know I have to move on because they're not fast enough. And they're not fast enough in their communication. And I should have seen that up front. And I think... The way that you communicate is often the way you work. And it doesn't mean that you have, for instance, I don't respond to all text messages. You know, I don't think that every single thing that comes in front of me needs to be handled. I probably let 40% of things go unanswered and 20% of things I am on top of it, like Sauron's eye in Lord of the Rings. I'm just watching. If, if I was to look at your business, do you think that your highest performers, is there sort of a correlation between how much they talk and how much they don't? There is a correlation between having no patience for wasted time. Interesting. Tell me. So for instance, one of my guys here, Tanner, he's like, oh man, I can't engage with this human because they're always talking to me and I don't really have time to do that. And that is what I have found with high performers. They do not like when you waste their time. And so you know, if you think about the typical office life, why do we not like typical office life? Because people come in, it's like water cooler, bullshit talk where nobody really says anything. You ask about the kids. You don't know the kids' names. What happened this weekend? You don't really care. High performers are not interested in that. Why? Because you want to perform. You want to talk about interesting things that move you forward. And then you want to go live your life. You want out of the office. I found low-level performers, they actually want to waste time during the day because they're not trying to execute. They're trying to just show that they are there. And there's a big difference between the two. And every time I hire a, a low performer, it's because I ignore that point, you know? Which point? The urgency, the lack of urgency in time. Yes, wasting. yes. I forget about it in the interview, you know? And it's really important to pay attention to those types of people in your life. Who are the people that just are okay wasting your time? Because what does that mean? If they're okay wasting your time, they're definitely wasting their time. There was a phrase that I read in your work where you used the phrase obsessed, not interested. Oh, yeah. I really love that. I actually screenshotted it on the way over here today and I sent it to some of, some of my team members that I talk about this a lot too, about this idea of obsession and specifically the team members that are on the forefront of really hiring people because there is a big correlation between the outcome of someone who is obsessed versus someone who isn't. Yeah. And the obsessed people are just always the best. They win. You know, I was with Carl Rove again, who's like not a popular figure, but he was chief of the chief of staff, deputy chief of staff to George W. Bush. And is like one of, they call him the architect because he architects most of the Republican races in this country. Mm -hmm. And so whether you like it or not, I'm, I don't really care. I don't need to like somebody to learn from them. Doesn't matter to me. And so I, I had him on the podcast to hear like, what does it mean to like architect the centers of power? That's fascinating. And um, when I was talking to him, what stood out to me, I'd been in, in meetings with him multiple times and at his house a few times for, for fundraising events. And I would watch him and somebody would ask a question that was like, hey, why did Bob Sanders in Pennsylvania lose this senatorial race? And his response would be like, well, we lost it by, you know, 1,200 votes on the third Friday on like December 4th, 2012. And the reason is because we didn't have this segment of the population come out. And then he would do that for like five locations across the country. And I remember I asked him, I was like, do you have a photographic memory? And he's like, absolutely not. I only have one about the things I'm obsessed with. Mm. And I think we all actually have that. Like you've met friends where like they know every score of a football game for mm -hmm. Manchester United ever. Yeah. Do they have a photographic memory? No, they're obsessed. And so if you can find people who are obsessed with the thing that you're doing, it just means they don't work hard. They're just like, they, they think of it as hardly working because they're so intense on it and mm -hmm. they can't help themselves.